to uh, item five, employee training. We're, we're going to cover everything on our written program. We're going to train annually as required in the standard. And the records of this training will be kept uh, in the safety office and you can look at them at any time. They also will be on the network as well. Okay, outside contractors. Um, I appreciate the help. Uh, a few of you guys recently pointed out that some of the contractors who come on site are not wearing the correct PPE. And that's something which you know, I've addressed at that time. And we also had an electrical contractor on site recently who, when I asked him to provide us with his safety program, he had one with him. So that was pretty good too. And it was, a, it was at least what we had on site, and he met that, which is what we expect. Now, the contractor, it works two ways. The contractor needs to know exactly what we have on site. So we can provide him with our program, and we can give him the information of where everything is. He has to let us know what he's bringing on site. Because he could be bringing on different gases, different materials. So we have to know and we have to be in communication. And I think we can write the standard up, Chris, where whoever contracts with the guys to come on, we can get that information with their insurance and everything else that they know the right for us. So that, that's something to work on there. And then every year, the records I mentioned, um, we're going to keep the records on site. And then we're going to review the program. And your feedback on this program um, is going to be key. Okay, so that, that's what we need. Oscar, any, any questions so far? Yeah, everything, are you okay with everything? I know it's a refresher, but uh, Patty, any, any business before I know? Yeah, I'm Okay. All right, now the next two pages, just, just briefly on the colored sheets there. Um, it goes over what we just mentioned, but there's, there's a couple of things I want you to look at there. If you look in the, the table on, on the first page, it gives you there, it gives you the HMIS ratings on several of the products that we use here. One of them is cast off. Um, as you go down, wet concrete. You can see from, from a health standpoint, it's a two, flammability one, um, and then reactivity is zero, okay? Zero is the best, because zero is minimal uh, hazards with any of them. Now, on cast off, we have, uh, from the health standpoint, is one. From a flammability, because uh, there's, there's oil based and there's some petroleum spirits in there, it's a two but reactivity is zero. The one which um, we don't use a great deal of, but acetone. Uh, do you use much acetone, will you? Or that, that's, that's one which we, we really have to handle with care. And when you look at the NSDS or acetone, it explains so well about how we need to handle it, what we need to wear, uh, protect the polygon noise and everything else. So it really is a, an in-depth NSDS on that one. If you go to the uh, sheet on the other side, this HMIS is, is displayed there, and it says that every container on, on SMC property should be labeled. So that means whether this, this is a 55 gallon cowboy, uh, sorry, a 250 gallon cowboy, 55 gallon drum, or a quart pot, it has to be labeled. Okay? So which, whichever comes in that way. Um, it says there are two types of systems, but with an R3, now the UM Labs got one as well now, so. That's something to look into. And then the next uh, four or five pages is just the safety booklets that, that we've had on the stations, or I just uh, printed them out. And feel free when we finish this training to come up, have a look at these. It's a very simple way that explains it. If you don't want to read the standard, at least read this, and, and it just makes it a little bit easier to, to understand. So, so pretty much, um, that's, that's where we're, we're at with our written program. We have everything that we need. A a any other questions on that? Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through an exercise right now where we're actually gonna take an MSDS, okay? And you, you have them in front of you. We're gonna split into teams. Um, so you, you four guys will be one team here. And, uh, you know, work as a team, we just have one guy white on the labels. We're gonna pull all these labels that are already on these, uh, these cans here. Um, yeah, if you four guys, uh, no, you, you three guys go as a team, and then uh, and then you three uh, go as a team by you, okay? Uh, and the idea is, we're going to pick, we just go through a, a, a little example of what we're going to look at. So if you look at the, the wall right now, the screen, okay, these, these are the barrier forms, okay? And pretty much we all know that when, when they're actually, um, they, they get prepared and needs to accept the concrete so then, we, we can strip them easily afterwards. They coat everything inside 
with a spray or a solution of what we call cast off. Okay, it's a release agent. It's oil based. And what happens is that once we form the, the, the cast, the casting or the concrete, it helps it release and come away from the form. Okay, so so that's what we're going to look at. Now there's a, that's a deco form that is actually used on there. And I don't know if you notice in there, but there's a coffee cup there that isn't labeled. And, uh, not <laughs> <laughs> okay. I hope not. <laughs> so, 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 I'll tell you, I'll tell you another. Let's see if you know that in a second. But, uh, okay. Now, at, the, at this moment in time, this, this is a container that comes in in bulk and it does have a label. Okay? And it tells you what it is and it gives a description on that. It doesn't have the HMIS on that, but it, it, does, give, it does have the label. So but we would like an HMIS on that. So let's go to the next step. And uh, there will be another one on this too, Chris, coming up shortly, maybe in place of this. But, but that, that's the pressurized container that we actually take the top off and we put the cast off into there. There's no label on it, and there has to be. If it's a label that can be defaced easily or the material wipes it off, then we have to tag it. There has to be a way to identify it. Okay? So that, that's, that's the project. And, and we're going to simulate it, if you want, with our cans. Okay. So let, let's assume now that this is the, the large container of cast off, okay? This is the air pot that we're going to be filling into, okay? So we'll go through that. First of all, let's all look at the NS, NSDS for cast off. The question I would have for you is, if I asked you, um, if I can go back, but if I asked you, say, um, say, wait, if I asked you to find an NSDS for cast off for this material, how would you find it? So, so first of all, you would look for the name uh, of the material. Then, then what we would do is, is we would go to the MSDS box. Okay, the, the, these, the, all of the MSDS is a three main ones. So we're going to look in the alphabetic here. You soon see the number and the alphabetic. And, then, and it's by product name, golden. So you would go to book number one, which would be a C, uh, probably number one. And you would look for cast off. This is how I've done this uh, yesterday. I find cast off, and you know, this is number 309. So this is the 309th chemical, and we've got um, 439 now. So, for any of it, so we know that this is the NSDS, and then you match it up back, back here if you want to be absolutely certain, because uh, sometimes you have different um, manufacturers. And then you match that up with the manufacturer and the, and the number as well. So that's, that's how we would do that. A any questions on that? Patty, pretty straightforward, okay? So that's not too bad you can do that. And uh, so, all right, so we're going to look now. So now, now we found this is it. It's a, it's a stony liquid. But anyway, so now we've got it. Now what we're going to look at now, the object now is we want to label this. Now there's labels on there, but we're going to put labels over that so one person can write on the new label. So we have to determine from this MSDS how we label the, the, the containers. So I'm going to go over briefly, number one, section one on the, on the uh, MSDS. It's going to give you the product name, which is cast off, the manufacturer, which is Unitex, all the emergency contact information. So if you have a question, we have a question, we know who to contact, and it's usually on CamTrack, it's usually 24 hours, any time, that we could get a reply from a call center, but they will get us an answer. Okay, and, and then the product name is down below as well, the emergency phone numbers. Section two is the composition. And you can see on here it tells you it's, it's oil and solvent based, and it tells you the, the, the quantities. Not always accurate to the nearest uh, gram, milliliter, whatever, but it does give you less than, more than percentage wise. Okay? Number three is the hazards identification. And usually this is a route of entry, so if you get it on your hands, if, you're gonna, if you could swallow it, if, if it's going to go in your clothes and eye contact, it makes reference to it there. Not in detail, but it gives you the reference of the target organs to be aware of if you're using this material. The, uh, on the next section there, it also tells you the, the what they call the chemical abstract numbers on the chemistry side, what it's made up. This was something that was never done by manufacturers before. But now we know accurately what's in there. Each, each number has a chemical abstract number, cast number, 
and then the exposure levels and limits that uh, we're allowed to, to be exposed to. Section four is first aid measures, and the one I want to point out on here, because I don't know if you think the same way as me, but on ingestion, on section four on the MSDS, it says, if a large amount of material is swallowed, do not induce vomiting. Now most of us, if we had this in our mouths, the first thing you want to do is be sick. It's not always the best way. Uh, do not induce vomiting. Should vomiting occur, uh, be sure to keep a victim's head you know, below hips to avoid aspiration of vomit. So it, it could get pretty sticky on him for breathing and everything else. So it's wise that we look at this before we induce anything with somebody and help somebody. Okay, or if, you, if you're doing it for yourself. So always look at the first aid measures. Firefighting, even though the, the flashpoint is 140, it's, it's, it's only a, a, a two, as we, we've seen earlier on uh, uh, there. So it's, it's not a high rate, but it's, you've got to keep it away from heat. Um, you know, we, we go to section six. We have to have, uh, if, it did, if, it, if we had a hole in here, how do we pick it up and what, how do we dispose of it? It tells us that. And we have to have spill prevention plan for that. Um, the handling and the storage, um, Bill Weeks and Roberto are going to be under uh, a lot of scrutiny with this program because we have to come up with a, a great way to handle this. And then we have to have a standard for that also. Um, on the exposure side and uh, engineering controls, it gives you ventilation. You're always trying to get plenty of ventilation. Respiratory protection, if needed. It's not mandatory, but we'll work that out for, in, in a second. And then protection of clothing, and if you get contaminated, you know, then what you have to dispose of that, that clothing. Um, the next page then, this is one of the more detailed MSDSs. They never used to be like this, Chris, did they? I mean, you have to struggle to get information. Okay, number nine is physical and chemical properties. And a lot of times, uh, technical guys, process guys, engineering, will use this information before we actually get it on site. So the boiling point, uh, the color, you know, what base is it and everything else. Stability and reactivity, we'll go over widening in section 15 in a second. Then the, uh, I can't never pronounce this, toxicology, uh, logical, I can't spell it, I can't say it, but toxics, okay? And uh, 11, and then ecosystem, disposal, and transport. Very, uh, a great deal of information on these uh, MSDSs, you know, and, uh, and it covers a lot of areas of, of, 